Hey everyone, I'm Tony. Welcome back to the Akita Life. In this video, I wanna talk about how to choose the right breeder to get your Akita puppy from, and I want to tell you about a few red flags to watch out for. But first, I wanna start with my story and how I really got lucky with my first dog and how I ended up with Haga here sitting behind me. So my first dog, I was about 20 years old and I wanted a dog and I said, I'm gonna go down to the local shelter and pick one out. I didn't really have anything in mind. I knew that I wanted a slightly bigger dog and I stumbled across an Akita mix. He was a Japanese Akita mix. He was cute, he seemed friendly, so I took him home. I got extremely lucky with Loki. He was a happy, healthy dog. He was super sweet and gentle. He was very smart and easy to train. As far as dogs go, he was probably one of the easiest dogs I've ever seen. And really, I just lucked out with him, which is surprising because he was a Japanese Akita mixed with Dalmatian, which are two pretty eccentric uh, types of dogs and they each have their own really quirky personality traits. I'm not sure if those things just cancel each other out, but he was such an easy dog and he was relatively healthy. He lived to the age of 13. I would say 13 years for a bigger breed uh, is a good run. And when I was ready to get a new puppy, I did some reading and I realized that a lot of the personality traits that I loved about Loki were uh, from his Akita lineage. But Japanese Akitas are a little bit difficult to find in the United States, so I decided I was going to get an American Akita. And like most people, I just went onto Google and I typed in Akita breeders near me. So I found the uh, American Kennel Club's website and they actually have a marketplace. And that's a somewhat of a household name, right? Everyone knows about the AKC. And I thought, okay, if they're on the marketplace, this is probably a legitimate breeder. And so I found this breeder in Maryland I went to their website, they had some really cute dogs, they had pretty good Google reviews, and uh, just to be sure that I was gonna make the right choice, I actually went on to the Akita subreddit on reddit.com, and I said, hey, does anyone know anything about this breeder? Are they legit? And I pretty much got flamed and roasted really bad. Everyone's like, dude, this is a backyard breeder, don't buy from them. Uh, and this really set off a journey about learning a lot about both Akitas, but dog breeding in general. I was so fortunate to meet some really helpful and wonderful people on Reddit. And one of the active users on there uh, was a young lady named Alexis, and she owns a kennel called Moro Akitas. I believe they're down in Tennessee. And she is extremely knowledgeable about Akitas and breeding and is very helpful. And she was able to help point me in the right direction. Uh, but this was amidst the pandemic. So a lot of breeders had put their breeding on hold. But here are a few things that you should look for when you are looking for a dog. Number one, does the breeder you're looking at have the health certificates for the parents of the litter? With Akitas, what people are really looking at a lot is their joint health, uh, particularly their hips, because bigger dogs tend to have more joint problems because they're heavier, it's more weight on the joints, and you can go get a hip score for your dog. It's, I believe, a process where they have three different veterinarians score it, and then they take the average, and there's you know poor, fair, good, and excellent. And of course, you can't guarantee that just because your your dog's parents have excellent hips that your dog will, but it, it greatly increases the likelihood of it being the case. They also can get certifications for the, the health of the dog's eyes, and things like that are extremely important. So a red flag you wanna look out for, when I was talking to some of these backyard breeders and I realized that these health certificates were important, when I would ask for that information, they all said the exact same thing which was, I don't have the cert certifications, but I've never had a problem. Now, great, I don't know if that's the truth or not, if they've never had a problem, but think of it like smoking cigarettes. You might know someone that smoked a pack a day their entire life and never had any health issues because of it, but we know for a fact that smoking increases your likelihood of getting cancer. So that's anecdotal evidence that they've never had a problem. That's not good enough for me. Be very wary of anybody that says, I've never had a problem. The second thing you want to look for when you're looking for a quality breeder is, do they do as much investigating about you as you are doing about them? 
So what I found was most reputable breeders are going to have a very thorough puppy application, sometimes up to five or six pages. And many of these breeders actually would prefer to come to your home to see where the dog is gonna be going. And if they can't, they require you to send photographs of your property, of your house, and the, they want references for personal references. They wanna be able to talk to the veterinarian that you're gonna be bringing the dog to. They want to know about your previous dogs. How long are you at home during the day? What are your work hours? And it might seem annoying to have to answer all this. It might seem like an invasion of your privacy, but they are doing their due diligence because they care about your dog. They care about their dog that they're gonna be giving to you. So if a breeder doesn't care about that, if the puppy application is literally like you fill out your name and address and you submit a deposit, stay away from that breeder. The third thing to look out for is price. Be very skeptical of anything that seems like a really good deal. What I found was with the backyard breeders, they would be as cheap as $500 and some of them were up around 1500 but from a reputable breeder who's breeding you know, show quality dogs and has all the health certificates, is registered with the American Akita Club, um, they are going to be usually starting at about $1,200 or $1,500, or you might pay as much as $2,500 or $3,000 for one of these dogs. And it might seem like, oh, you know, I don't want to spend the money. But if you aren't willing to spend the money to get a good quality dog, you probably can't afford to own an unhealthy dog. Because if a dog has tons of health problems, not only are you spending money on vet bills, but you're also spending time taking your dog to the vet and taking care of a sick dog. And time is very valuable. And of course, there's the emotional toll that it's going to take on you to constantly be, you know, caring for a, a sick dog and you can't put a price on that you know if you have to put your dog down at an early age that is going to be absolutely heartbreaking the next thing you want to look out for is breeders being very quick to want to take your money even if they don't have any puppies available so what I found was when I would reach out to a very reputable breeder, they would say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, uh, we don't have any puppies right now, but here is another great breeder that I, I know has puppies or has puppies coming up. I recommend you reach out to them. These people care about the integrity of the breed. They care about healthy dogs being bred into this, this line and they're not doing it for the money. That's why they're happy to refer you. With some of the backyard breeders, they would say something like, well, I don't have any puppies right now, but why don't you give me $500 for a deposit and I'll let you know when I have some. Huge red flag, because again, they are doing it for the money, which means they don't really necessarily care about the quality, the health, the happiness of their puppies. So where do you find a quality breeder? Well, it's not so straightforward, unfortunately, but here are some good resources. First, I would recommend don't just go to Google because that's gonna turn up people who are really good at marketing their business, not necessarily the best at breeding their dogs. And those two things are, are uh, you know, not the same. I would say that first and foremost, the, the, your first stop should be akitaclub.org. That is the official club for American Akitas in the United States. They have a directory of registered reputable breeders who have to submit an application to register in that directory. And the Akita breeding world is pretty tight knit. Everyone knows everyone else. And so even if you don't buy a puppy from one of those breeders, uh, they can certainly point you in the direction of quality breeders because not every good breeder is necessarily in that directory some just you know don't bother with registering it but even still uh, those people can point you in the right direction that's actually how I found um, my breeder and my uh, puppy was uh, someone referred me to them and and they had lots of experience breeding these dogs all of their uh, the both the parents had all the health certifications necessary uh, we got lots of pictures lots of information about the the breeding process the litter as they were you know being born as they were growing and getting to that eight week uh, point where we could take them home so a very communicative uh, breeder is extremely important I would say also stay away from uh, the AKC marketplace, the American Kennel Club marketplace. 
they claim to have like some vetting process or you can buy like an AKC certification, but honestly, it doesn't seem like it's that thorough of a process. For example, uh, one of the breeders that I found on there, I did some Googling on the owner of the kennel and he had been to prison uh, for some very inappropriate relationships with a minor and stalking somebody. And he had also uh, been arrested for uh, mistreating animals. And there he was with his puppies for sale on the American Kennel Club's uh, website. So not really the best resource. Um, and what I found is that really good breeders have a long waiting list, so they don't tend to advertise their puppies because they don't need to, right? But really good breeders usually have more applicants than they do puppies, meaning they have a waiting list of 10 people and the litter's only six puppies. That means four people are getting put on to the next litter. So really good breeders tend to not uh, advertise their their litters because they, they just don't have to. So you, you have to take the initiative if you're interested in owning one of these dogs to doing your homework and finding these, these quality breeders. So that's it for this video. I hope that's helpful. I hope if you're looking for an Akita puppy, this can point you in the right direction. I would highly recommend uh, going to akitaclub.org or go to Maro Akitas. I'll put a link in the description. Like I said, Alexis, uh, the owner of that kennel is extremely knowledgeable and very, very helpful. Um, probably unlikely she's gonna have a puppy for you because she does have quite an extensive waiting list because her dogs are absolutely beautiful, but uh, she can certainly point you in the right direction. You can also check her out on Instagram. Her Instagram's got tons of awesome Akita photos. If you're into that kind of thing, her Instagram is the Spalding Pack. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'm always happy to help. Again, I'm not an Akita expert. I just happen to own this lazy guy right here. So if you're interested in getting a puppy from the same breeder that I did, we got him from Paradise Akitas in Idaho. I'll also put some information about them in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see everyone next time.